an example like this, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys remember, when we're trying to find the zeros, and it doesn't matter if, the, if it's a quadratic like you guys remember, or what we're going to do is we're start going to get into polynomials, though, that are cubic and quartic and quintic and have higher and higher powers. So the first thing we're going to look into is we just factor this. And guess what? The process of factoring a quadratic is going to be the same thing as factoring a polynomial. We're going to replace our y or f of x, or just make sure the whole polynomial is set equal to 0. So if you have values on both sides, which I noticed on your test, you had a lot of problems where values were on both sides, and students didn't always get the values to one side to set it equal to 0. So make sure we always have our polynomial set equal to 0 first. Now we just need to factor. And basically, our factoring technique, the way that I said, was what two numbers multiply to give you 12 and then add to give you negative 7? Since they're adding to give us negative 7, I know that both of my two factors are going to have to be negative, And I obtain negative 3 and negative 4. So therefore, this is 0 equals x minus 3 times x minus 4. Would everybody agree with me? And what's nice about factoring, when you have factoring set equal to 0, now you can apply the 0 product property. So here are my factors, correct? My factors, because it's in factored form, these are my factors. This is also what we would call factorization. If you guys remember that vocabulary on your last test, a lot of you guys had trouble with that when it was doing the factorization. This would be a representation of factorization, because that's the factors. Then I just apply the 0 product property by setting each factor equal to 0. And now I can solve using my inverse operations. So x equals 3 and x equals 4. Right? That should have been the basic one. Hopefully I'm not reteaching anything new from that one. <laughs>